The fans are the heart and soul of wrestling. Their noise and energy help provide the soundtrack to the action we see in the ring, but there are also times when the crowd are quiet. This usually reflects the indifference they have towards a wrestler or a match. However, sometimes we get those rare occasions where the audience are so shocked by what they've seen, they react with silence. We'll be focusing on some of these moments today as we look at 10 stunned crowd reactions in wrestling. Our first example takes us back to ECW in 1996 for an event known as High Incident. This show is best known for two things, Kurt Angle's first professional wrestling appearance and the infamous crucifixion of the Sandman. Sandman had just successfully defended his ECW championship against Two Cold Scorpio and following the match, the Sandman would be attacked by Raven who then ordered Stevie Richards, Nova and the Blue Meanie to tie Sandman to a cross. And I'm there going, oh this is, this is fucked up Meanie, this is fucked up. The Sandman was given a crown of barbed wire as he hung from the cross, creating one of the most shocking images ever seen in wrestling. This is the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. A stunned silence emanated throughout the ECW arena which normally housed the most rowdy and vocal of fans. And that was a one time in the ECW arena where the fans weren't saying, you know, go to hell and scream, and they were just quiet. It was the right kind of heat. I mean, the people were like, ah, this is heavy. You know what I mean? And they were just like that, the quiet Japanese heat. Raven was forced to apologize for going through with the crucifixion, seemingly without the knowledge of the promotion CEO, Paul Heyman. So for the people who I deeply offended, I apologize. Heyman also insisted he knew nothing about the angle when confronted by Kurt Angle. A furious angle threatened legal action and demanded that his segment from earlier in the night not be aired on the same show as the crucifixion. If I'm on TV with that crucifixion, if, if, if my name or my face is seen on TV on the same program, you'll be here for my attorney. Kurt's relationship with ECW effectively ended on the night it began, as the recently crowned Olympic gold medalist would make no further appearances for the company. The promotion made sure to never air the incident, with footage of it only coming to light as a result of being featured on the rise and fall of ECW DVD. Much like ECW did, the WWF's Attitude Era also pushed the envelope, and one way in which they did this came in the form of man-on-women violence. One of the most shocking examples of this taking place occurred on the April 9, 2001 edition of Raw, where Triple H and Stone Cold as the two-man power trip teamed with Stephanie McMahon to take on the Hardy Boys and Lita. It was a short but entertaining match with plenty of action-packed offense from both teams. The finish came when Lita hit a twist of fate and moonsault combination to Stephanie, which got the three. After the bell, Austin and Triple H cornered Lita and the game then hit her with a pedigree. <laughs> The Hardys then attempted to intervene, but were instead beaten down with a steel chair. Austin rained down a series of chair shots to Matt, who later bravely tried to shield from the beating, but it only got worse. <laughs> The attack on Lita was done to get heat on Stone Cold, who had just turned heel at WrestleMania by delivering a steel chair beatdown to The Rock, just like the one he had dished out to Lita. The fans just did not want to boo Austin though. They even cheered him after his chair shots to Matt Hardy, but they remained mostly quiet for the Rattlesnake's destruction of Lita. I told you this could which was unsurprising given that this was probably one of the most brutal beatings ever given to a woman by a man in WWE history. Another memorable moment in WWE history occurred at the 1994 Survivor Series. Here, Bret Hart defended the WWF Championship against Bob Backlund in a submission match, where the only way to win would be if one wrestler's corner men threw in the towel. The British Bulldog was in the corner of Bret while Owen Hart was in Backlund's corner, as Owen and Bret's parents, Stu and Helen Hart, sat in the front row. Deep into the match, Bret gained the advantage by locking in the sharpshooter until Owen interfered by attacking his brother from behind. This led to the Bulldog chasing Owen and then charging at him only for Owen to move and Bulldog to crash into the steps. A concerned Brett looked on to see if Bulldog was okay, but this left Hart in a prime position for a cross-face chicken wing at the hands of Backland. This was a move the WWF had done a great job of getting over on television in the months prior, with no one being able to get out of the hold. This made things all the worse for Brett, since his corner man was out cold. From there, Owen pleaded with his parents, attempting to make them throw in the towel on Brett's behalf. Helen attempted to throw the towel in, only for Stu to stop her. The fans continued to get behind Brett, who'd been struggling in the hole for over nine minutes. 
Eventually, it became too much to bear for Helen, who snatched the towel away from Stu, throwing it in the ring and causing the match to come to an end. Owen immediately ran in and grabbed the towel, reeling away in celebration since his plan had worked to perfection. Backlund stood in the ring victorious as a concerned silence came over the crowd. Gorilla Monsoon, I think we have a new World Wrestling Federation champion. Stu and Helen helped Brett to the back, whilst Backlund was presented with the WWF Championship in the ring. I can't believe it! I cannot believe it! Next, we have an instance in which fans were shocked over a booking decision, occurring at the 2017 Backlash pay-per-view where Jinder Mahal challenged Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. The match began to get interesting once the wrestlers brought the action to the outside. There, Orton delivered three backdrops onto the announce table to Jinder and his managers, the Singh brothers. Oh my God! You turned inside out by Orton! Randy politely gave JBL back his hat before the Viper continued his annihilation of the Singhs by hitting a double draping DDT. But this gave time for Jinder to recover, allowing him to hit the Colossus on Orton, which shockingly got the victory. The people in the building reacted in amazement. No one could believe that Jinder Mahal was the new WWE Champion, since Mahal had been an enhancement talent for nearly all of his time in WWE, but had now been quickly fast-tracked into winning the WWE title in order to increase WWE's growing popularity in India. Had the company done a better job in building up Mahal prior to winning the belt, his victory wouldn't have come off as so shocking. No! No! Three <laughs> genders won the WWE title! We now go to a match that not only shocked the fans, but also did damage to an entire market. This happened when NWO killed the town at WCW 4 Brawl 1997 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The match in question saw the NWO battle the four horsemen in war games. The New World Order started out with a 2-on-1 advantage, double teaming Chris Benoit. Steve Mongo McMichael then entered to even the odds. The next wrestler out was six, followed up by the nature boy Ric Flair, much to the audience's delight. Kevin Ash was the final entry for the NWO, and then Kurt Hennig entered last for the Horsemen. It was now a 4v4 match, but the odds swung yet again in the NWO's favour when Kurt Hennig turned on the Horsemen, effectively joining the New World Order in the process. The remaining Horsemen members were then bound to the cage via the handcuffs Hennig provided, all except for Ric Flair, who instead received a jackknife powerbomb from Nash. Flair's head was then placed in the cage doorway, and the NWO threatened to smash Ric's skull with the steel, unless the Horsemen surrendered. But despite Mongo surrendering for his team, Hennig went through with the assault anyway. Rick and the announcers sold the moment tremendously, while the crowd looked on in shock. This was Flair country after all. The most sickening night that I have ever spent as a broadcaster. I have spent here tonight. We've got to get out. And the North Carolina crowd had just witnessed their favorite wrestler and group get absolutely decimated. I wanted heat because heat is life. In a more heartbreaking moment now, we go back to the October 22nd, 2018 episode of Raw, where the Universal Champion Roman Reigns opened the show to talk to the audience. Reigns would speak out of character, saying that his real name was Joe, and that he'd previously been living with leukemia when he was younger, and unfortunately, it had returned. And I've been living with leukemia for 11 years. You could hear a pin drop as the fans couldn't believe it. They watched on in shock, with some being driven to tears. Reigns then relinquished the Universal Championship and was met by his fellow SHIELD members Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins on the ramp. They each did their famous pose to end one of the most emotional segments ever in WWE history. I can't be that fighting champion and I'm going to have to relinquish the Universal Championship. Two hours after Reigns' announcement, the crowd would be completely stunned yet again. It was the main event of the show and the Raw Tag Team titles were on the line when Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins challenged Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. Late into the bout, the ref referee would be bumped. Braun Strowman then ran in and brawled through the crowd with McIntyre. Ziggler then tried to use the tag belt as a weapon only for it to be taken off him by Ambrose. Dolph then ate a curb stomp while Ambrose threw the ref back into the ring to count the fall, meaning Ambrose and Rollins were the new Raw Tag Team Champions. During the celebrations, however, Ambrose turned on Rollins by hitting Seth with the dirty deeds. What the hell? Oh my God! The fans' faces told the story, since it was unfathomable that Ambrose would turn on Rollins on such a night. Fans were left asking why, as Dean continued to punish Seth, taking the assault to the outside. From there, Ambrose tore off the protective padding to expose the floor. One more dirty deeds later, and Ambrose exited through the crowd.
Wrestlers performing through injury has been a common occurrence throughout the sport's existence. This may be worked into the story of a match where fans will know how much pain the wrestler is in based on how they're selling. It's much rarer for the audience to actually be able to see the scars or physical marks of the injury. This made the story of Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins' match inside Hell in a Cell all the more special. Rhodes entered the match with a torn pectoral muscle and once the American Nightmare removed his jacket to reveal the true effects of the injury, it was as if all the air had been taken out of the arena. The the audience went from chanting Cody's name to becoming eerily quiet. Rhodes sensationally worked through the injury as he and Rollins wrestled an all-time classic match. Through all the punishment, Cody fought back by using a bull rope, hitting two crossroads, and then nailing Rollins with a sledgehammer to pick up the win. One wrestling moment that will live in infamy took place at WrestleMania 30, the night where Brock Lesnar wrestled The Undertaker. The dead man went into the match with a 21-0 WrestleMania undefeated streak. The build to the match made it seem like it would play out like any other streak match. But if we go further back, we'll remember when Taker and Lesnar went to war in 2002 and 2003, with the Phenom never managing to come out with his hand raised. Brock always seemed to have Taker's number. However, Mania 30 seemed like the perfect time for the dead man to finally get his big win over the Beast and make it 22-0 on the grandest stage. Early in the match, Taker took a nasty bump on the floor, which ultimately gave him a concussion. This greatly affected the match as Undertaker looked like a shell of himself for the rest of the encounter. I got hurt so bad. I don't even remember that match. So today I don't remember it. Amazingly though, despite his condition and state of mind, the dead man was still able to deliver all of his signature moves. But so was Lesnar, hitting three F5s in total and then going for the cover. The fans' reaction to the pinfall tells the whole story, as they came out of their seats in complete amazement. The streak is over. While others looked on, some in surprise, some in confusion, and some in a complete trance. Many believe The Undertaker would retire undefeated at WrestleMania, or at the very least have the streak broken by a younger wrestler. So when Lesnar got the victory, it shocked everyone. There are not many moments in wrestling that could have gathered such an incredible reaction, and it's hard to imagine we'll ever see anything like this again. Nevertheless, this is the one time in wrestling where everyone remembers where they were watching, and most importantly, how they felt. Ultimate respect to The Undertaker. Finally, we'll look at perhaps the only moment that can rival The Undertaker's street breaking when it comes to fan reaction. We're talking about the night Bruno Sammartino lost the WWF Championship after holding the belt for over seven years before losing to the Russian bear Ivan Koloff at Madison Square Garden in 1971. There exists only grainy 8mm film footage of the match, but it's still crazy to watch it all play out. The garden was said to have been reminiscent of a funeral on the night, given the crowd's astonishment. It was inconceivable that Bruno would lose the title he held for so long. So much so that Koloff was not presented with the belt until after he got back into the locker room, as it was feared the MSG crowd would riot had Koloff paraded the title around the ring. Instead, he quickly left as the audience looked on. Some were in tears, but all were in shock. Look at the riot. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you like this one, be sure to check out our video on 10 times that the fans hijacked a match. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.